2024 Ironman World Championships in Kona, Hawaii. First off, congratulations to all athletes who have qualified here. It is an amazing accomplishment, and I hope you cherish the day. It is one of the best, if not the best, Ironmans out on the circuit. So congratulations, everyone who has qualified. Let's dive into some specifics, and we're immediately going to go to the schedule of events. Things kick off on Friday, October the 18th, with the info booth opening 6.30 to 10 a.m. A lot of this stuff is going to be at the pier or the hotel, which is located right next door in the days leading up to it. That's pretty much where you're going to find the hub for most things leading up to the race. Uh, Saturday, October 19th. Again, the info booth is open. We got the Hoka Kona Town Fun Run. We also have the training swim packet pickup, which is going to, which is going to happen on Sunday the 20th. We also have some street eats happening that day. Sunday the 20th, that is the training swim that the packet pickup starts at 5.30, closes at 6.45. If you haven't registered for it, please register for it now ahead of time. It just makes everything easier. And I believe that it closes and you will not be able to join unless you register ahead of time. So do it now if you are watching this video. The training swim does kick off at 7. And then we got the, 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 the stroll, which happens afterwards later that day. And that's pretty much it for Sunday. Quick note on the training swim. Um, feel free to kind of unleash it a little bit, but don't go super, super deep. You're there to get a solid training day, swim the course, and figure out the conditions. If you are there on the 20th, you're not there to win the overall swim award, uh, unless you are. So a lot of pros will be there. A lot of Some of the pros will be vying for that number one slot. There's a little award for it. Uh, but, you know, if you are not vying for that number one pole position out there, just be careful. Do not overdo it. Have fun, but not too much much fun and that's going to be the theme leading up to the race on race week a lot of traps uh that can kind of get you and a lot of opportunities to really really put the hammer down and it's just natural there's a lot of people uh pretty much the one percenters in the world are going to be there and it's only natural to mix it up a little bit <clears throat> so just be aware of that Monday, the 21st info booth, the Kona coffee boat is going to be out there, and the active release techniques are all going to be happening early in the morning, lasting until about noon. Volunteer check-in happens 9 to 4, and the Heroes of Hawaii is going to be happening from 6 to 8 p.m. Tuesday, pretty much the same things with the Info, Coffee Boat, ART. Athlete check-in is available from 9 to 4 on the 22nd. Accreditation opens the same time, Media Center, Volunteer check-in again. <clears throat> Thing, something that is different today is the uh, the dip and dash, and then there is the Parade of Nations happening an hour later at uh, at 5 p.m. So the athletes are going to gather at around 4 p.m., and then they will do the parade starting at 5, promptly at 5. 23rd, uh, this is kind of one of the bigger days out on the, for the lead up here for a lot of people. Again, pretty much the normal things happen in the morning. We have uh, something unique on this day from 8 to noon. That is the World Championship Course Insider Tips. Refer to page 3, scrolling down to page 3. It starts off at 8 with the swim course, and that lasts a little while until 10. And then you will have just the race venue overview, insider tips, tricks, things there. They're going to talk about T1, T2, the venue map, post-race, Q&As for there. And then the bike and the run course insider tips is going to be taking place at 11. Uh, they're going to do an overview, key highlights, pretty much everything you would expect from something like this. If you do go to something like this, make sure you are planning accordingly. Hydrate, bring some snacks, just overall just plan accordingly. Scrolling back up here to the uh, to where we left off here on the 23rd, athlete check-in 9 to 4 again. And uh, race briefings, this is the first day that race briefings do take place. The first is 9 for German, 10 for French, and 11 for Spanish, noon for Portuguese, and 1 for Japanese. Uh, the 24th, great day to be alive. Uh, pretty much everything that is normally here. Something that is unique on the 24th is the underpants run happening at 7.30. That's at the KRB back parking lot. Meet there, 7.30 a.m. Athlete check-in again, available from 9, closing at 2 today, or on that 24th. Uh, and then the, the banquet, the welcome banquet, is going to happen at 6 with the race briefing in English following two hours later at 8 p.m., on the 25th, this is uh, the moving day, big day. 
7 to noon. This is that ART uh, volunteer check-in. Again, check-in and cheer. The professional athlete bike check-in happens from 11 to 6 p.m. Age group athletes, uh, that's where you are going to check in your bike, helmet, gear check-in as well. That happens from 11.30 to 6 p.m. If you see the Kona Count crew, make sure you stop and roll by a little slower. Help them out. Tell them what you got on your bike. It is a cool experience. Saturday, October 26, personal needs and transition opens 4.30 a.m. to 6.15 a.m. That's at the KRB parking lot. Don't worry, um, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward there. They will loop you around. We'll go over that later on in the video. Uh, your race start for the professional men is going to happen at 6.25. For the physically challenged, is going to happen at 6.27. And the race start for age group men, the first wave, is going to take place at 6.40 a.m. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later on. With biking gear pickup happening 7 p.m. And no earlier than 7 p.m., but no later than 1 a.m. So that magic hour final finisher spectator celebration, which everyone loves, happens at 11. Lasts... Um, till then, until the, the closing hour, until the closing minute, it is a great experience, uh, one of the best experiences out there. The day after, 27th, Media Center is there. The Banquet of Champions happens at 6 p.m. Um, there is the, uh, the volunteer party, which happens on Monday the 28th at 5, uh, and that is pretty much it for the uh, schedule of events for leading up to and the race. So scrolling down here for the athletes, the race week events, I mentioned it earlier, but this is where you will be joining the the week festivities this is where you're going to register. So the Kona Town Fun Run, register there. There's an active link. Make sure you click there. The uh, training swim, make sure you click there if you are going to be there ahead of time on the 20th. The Iron Kids Dip and Dash, again, there is a link right through here. They have banquets over here. They have all kinds of stuff. The Welcome Banquet, Banquet of Champions. You can click there, and it is an active hyperlink, so make sure you do check out this stuff. It's going to come in handy if you plan on attending this or these things. It's just going to make your life a whole lot easier, and the stress will be a lot less when you get out to the race venue, which is one of the biggest keys in the week leading up to the race uh, or whenever you get there leading up to the race. Minimizing that stress, minimizing that all that wear and tear on your body, because it will be a lot and it can get easily out of control there in the days leading up to it. For athlete check-in, make sure you do check in by 2 p.m. on Thursday because all race packets have to be picked up by then. 2 p.m. on Thursday the 24th, you cannot pick up any race packet after October 24th, 2 p.m. There's a mandatory bike helmet and uh Run gear bag check-in as well. We've already talked about when. Just make sure you do attend it. And full bike covers are obviously not permitted, as is customary. And you will not have access to your bike gear bag or run gear bag on race morning. So that may change how you usually check in your things. But again, you will not have access to the bike gear bag or run gear bag on race morning. So what you put in there is what you're going to have to use on race day. You can't go into those areas on race morning. Wear your wristband, pretty much standard stuff. Uh, Pre-race info, you can read about all this cool stuff here. Scrolling down in our athlete guide, race day information, we've talked about it a little bit here, but uh, race morning procedure is listed here. Eight stations on the bike, you are going to experience a ton of stuff. They usually stock this race pretty, pretty well. Obviously, it's the World Championship, so they don't want anything to, to not happen for you. So on the bike, these are the things that you're going to be offered. On the run, these are the things that you're going to be offered. All personal needs bags will be discarded after the race, again, as is customary. Um, these are the, the aid station locations that you can pause the video and look at, or you can go to page 18 in the athlete guide and look at it as long as you want. Uh, just for comparison, or just for, uh, so you know, there are going to be 10 stops on the bike and they're going to be 24 stops on the run, ample opportunities to fuel. And we will be talking about that later race timing and cutoffs listed on page 21, um, this is going to be the uh, training while on the island. This is the recommendations that they give athletes on page 23, just so the uh, just so you can be as safe as possible here. Um, 
so they again so please refrain from cycling on any of the portions that are in red on the map here do not bike on there it's not very safe uh it's a little dangerous here so if you want to maximize your safety uh, bike on the gray parts of the map here don't do it on the red Talk about mineral sunscreen here, and you can do that on your own. Race day information. This is our venue here uh, that you're going to be experiencing on race morning. So this is a race morning flow. There's toilets over here. You're going to walk around over here, drop off your personal needs, your tattoo touch-up. You're going to continue going over here. Uh, this is, again, this is where you're going to have post-race medals, T-shirts, morning clothes, drop-offs, um, sleepwear, bag pickup, all of this good stuff, athlete food for after the race. This is going to be recovery. Uh, but in the morning, this is where you will be able to swim over here this is going to be the warm-up zone really really cool um <clears throat> it's awesome medical area over here uh athletes will be able to see loved ones a support crew right here they might be able to see them in another location over off of over here or maybe somewhere in here but this is usually the easiest spot for me and it's just going to be personal preference so meet up with them bike racks uh this is going to be where your bike access is but remember you are not going to have access to your stuff your bags here i should say um <clears throat> these are going to be the corrals corral one two three and four and then again you just continue rolling down over here and you follow this and then um at the banyan tree this is where you kind of loop around enter the corrals over here and this is going to be the the uh, the finish line later in the day, this blue area right here. Bleachers right through here. It's a great, it's a great, great thing on the race morning. Tons of cool stuff here. This is going to be our swim course right here. You enter the water over here, and then your swim course start it goes out here. When you come in, you will swim in this way, and then you will do this in reverse. Out you go, out to the bike. <clears throat> that is the, the race day information. Um, pretty much this is going to be where you're checking in. It's... It's pretty self-explanatory once you get there. I wouldn't really stress about that too, too much. These are our swim start waves here. The pros are wave one, the, the neon, or excuse me, the pros are the black wave. That happens at 625. 627 is the uh, physically challenged and handicapped. And then um, the race kicks off at 640 for the 18 to 24 and the 25 to 29 year olds. Uh, for the most part, we have five-minute increments in between waves, and then at seven, it changes to 10-minute increments in between waves. And that's the 30 to 34, 40 to 44, and onward and upward all the way up to 59 there. Going back up to our swim, the swim is laid out like this. We are going to start out right here, and that um, blue and... Uh, blue and red flag mark that is the the start it's an in-water start you'll line up uh, in your wave and you'll you'll come out into the water during this section here they'll have paddlers out there that will prevent you from advancing and then when it is your time to start the paddlers will turn and you can swim right through them then you will make your way down this way and you will do it in a clockwise fashion here the water should be pushing in one of two directions either it's going to be pushing this way or it's going to be pushing this way and because it is a cove right if it is pushing the second which is usually customary it is going to be swirling right there because that that inlet exists so the conditions are going to be a little bit different um, as you get from here and then they are going to change a little bit as you get out there so that's another reason why that practice swim is even more ideal for you to attend if possible. If not, they're gonna leave the swim buoys out there uh, and you do have the capability to swim out there when it is not the practice swim. Just make sure you bring the appropriate um, flotation and um, devices out there for you to stay safe. Also recommend swimming with a buddy out there and you can even practice entering and exiting the water, which is also another very, very important area because of sea urchins. They are scattered about. They do the best at kind of eliminating some of them, but you know it's it's the ocean out there. Nothing you can do about all of them. Um, so there are places that you do need to be aware of, and they will get you if you are not careful. In years past, they have had um, people run into the docks because of the current pushing them in, or excuse me, the pier. So just again, practice those things when you are doing your practice swim. Uh, try not to get too close to the pier so you don't get pushed into it. That is a painful experience. They will have kind of flags and things to prevent you from 
getting too far out there, but all those are just precautionary measures and it is possible to go over there. So just stay a little bit further away. Nothing wrong with swimming a little bit wide into that exit, which happens right there. So practice the entry and exit uh, in the days leading up to it. Figure out where the the best ways are to navigate out that section to get to the swim start and identify any marine uh, hazards out there that you can. So on race day, it can just be second nature. Huge tips for you. Uh, and again, the water conditions can vary out there. I've been out there some years where the the waves are a little bit stronger during this section, and then they flatten out a little bit over here. I've been out there some years where it's reverse. You know, you have a great easy start, and then the the wind or not the wind, the water is a little bit stronger out here. And that's going to be something that you're going to have to gauge on race day. Typically, what you're going to find. Um, way out and the way back are pretty even Steven they do you do experience different things out there uh, but again when you are coming or going out everyone's going to be really revved up so if the current is going this way it's not really going to matter because everyone's going to be jockeying for position it's the one percent remember what I said earlier in the video about the days leading up to the race that's going to be huge here in picking and choosing your battles on race day I'm going to go ahead and alert you that most people's battles are not going to be in this first section on the swim this is going to be an area for you to have free pulls out here let other people take the reins they grow they gladly will they just it's a it's an environment where most people just can't help themselves and use that to your advantage. Uh, I'm not saying throw your race away and let everyone do the work for you. But, you know, if you are in a wave where a lot of individuals are really, really going for it during this section here on the way out, ride the coattails, you know, free speed. Absolutely. And that's going to come in handy big time as you get further and further into the swim. Second half on the way out. This is where things change a little bit. People spread out a little bit more. It starts to become a little bit more individual and people's weaknesses start to get exposed. Not totally and that doesn't really happen until about this area on the way back. But talking about this section right here, this is where a lot of groups get formed. This is where the weaker swimmers start to fall off the pace here and it's only natural. The waves start to get a little bit different out here and they're going to be different from the very beginning to this section here uh, ride the waves a huge 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 tip for you is uh, learn to sight at the crest of a wave what people get into trouble with is the undulation of the sea a lot of people try to sight at the bottom of the the wave cycle so the crest or not the crest the valley of the wave and with that you have to stick your head up a little bit further you have to use a little bit more effort but if you learn the rhythm and the pattern of those waves that are arriving it will be a lot easier for you to navigate this swim course for sure uh, weaker to moderate swimmers out here, you, again, use the other people um, for sighting. You know, if you can't see the buoys and you're just really struggling out there, just pick some feet in front of you. <clears throat> Chances are they are going the right way. They're going to have um, people over here. They're going to have people over here preventing you from really going off course really, really far. Uh, that's the last thing they want on the ocean swim anyways, right? This section right here, a little bit of out the turn and a little bit of back. This is going to be one of the tougher areas for a lot of people. Really good swimmers, really comfortable swimmers. This is going to be where you are thriving. This is going to be where you're going to be able to jump up to groups if you are so inclined. This is going to be where you're going to be able to recover and kind of solidify a pact or a group of people here. And that pact will last pretty much up until this point right in here and it will break up it always does it's just how it goes um, and again all of that effort that was really flying over here if the current is going the traditional pattern this way will be a little easier but not always the case the weather patterns might may change the current might switch so just be aware don't be afraid to sh pull up those tide charts out there pull up the weather and see what you see out there another really really important tip and I'll try to change the color here for you so you don't get too confused um, I'll use red if the current is going in this direction and the wind is going in this direction it will create some unique issues on the on the top of the water the current will be going one way but because the wind is going another you know you might have some shorter choppier waves you might have a little bit of sea spray shooting at you pretty much the entire time on the way back into town 
And again, that's something that you're going to have to play by ear for the most part and watch what happens with those weather forecasts. But when you're out there, you're just going to have to feel it. You're going to have to be really aware of what's going on. And that is difficult at a race like this because it, it's a race of one percenters and everyone's really vying for that spot for whatever reason. They really, really, really want to get out of the water first. And this is not really a, a course where you, you really need to do that if you're not a pro. Right. And a lot of age groupers forget that. Um, but as you get closer and closer to the uh, the pier here, this is an area where you need to start thinking about the T1. Um, most of you have done this a number of times. You're no stranger to doing this anyways. At this race course, it just gets exacerbated just a little bit. So world champs, the marine life is there. As you get closer, the waves might be a little bit steeper, a little uh, bigger. And so there's a little extra things to think about. When you do get out there at the pier, you are at the pier at Kona. So you kind of forget and you just kind of just zoom on past there. Big tip, do not skip the showers over there. Just take a little extra second to wash off that salt water. Um, if you have swallowed seawater, there are a number of protocols you can use to kind of kind of correct um, but again if that if you want to know more on that I can talk about that on a more individual basis but don't skip the shower is really really important out there uh, just to kind of get some of that salt off you and just avoid some of the chafing that will happen later on uh, and then you get out on the bike and it is bike time so before we get to talking about bike specifics here this is the swim in this is the, the the transition area from the swim into the bike so this is the the corrals that we were talking about so the next wave ventures out over here these are the paddle borders and this is kind of the queue and then you once this wave goes then that you will slot up into this area and the paddle borders will be going back over here and they will be preventing you from advancing once it's your turn they'll stop they'll turn you swim right through it on the way back in this is what we were talking about before this is where you swim into or next to the pier so watch out for this area here there will be a little other uh, rope here to prevent you from doing that but again it's just a rope not a super solid barrier uh, they'll be swimming over here and then you exit you go through your tents you do your thing you exit over here and then you come back out loop back around to your bikes up over to this top section here this is the um the timing mat so you come over here continue on M bike mount area happens up here and then you'll be going up polani taking a left right off of the map right up here to the hot corner which we will talk about uh right now So this is that hot corner that they were talking about right here. It comes really, really quick, and I'm just going to zoom in really fast for you. Um, this is an opportunity for your Sherpas and everyone to kind of see you a number of times really early on in the race, and then that's kind of it unless you make the trek out to Javi or wherever you're going. Um, but the start happens right here. You're going to take that left, and you loop back around up through over here so you get to the Queen K, and then you come back down Polani again. So again, you do hit this hot corner again. I will tell you when you make this left-hand turn or approach this left-hand turn on the way out for the first time, the only time you do this, um, there's going to be a lot of people there. It's not uncommon for athletes to kind of rub shoulders here. You're, you know, you're struggling to get clipped in. There's a little bit of a grade to climb up. Um, so you just clipped in. Now you have to climb up. There's a lot of people. A lot of people are leaning over trying to get a view of the action. And with that, there's kind of a tunneling effect. So during this section, just avoid absolutely hammering it through this section. We've seen a number of incidents and crashes and bumps in this area just because everyone's trying to get a, a view of what's going on, um, which is cool. It's great. creates an awesome environment, but then it does create a, a number of issues for people, and we've seen a lot of impatient athletes really pay the price in, what, point one into the bike. Uh, but coming down Polani, you'll be flying down over here and you'll be hitting this out and back, coming back, and then you'll be coming up Polani. So you do get to see your athlete three times very, very quickly. If you are seeing a couple of athletes, this is a very popular spot to see them because you can see them in succession. And it doesn't matter if one's getting out a little bit ahead of the other because you'll be able to see them and see everyone right here. Really, really cool area to see them. Uh, and this is our bike. Uh, going over it really, really quickly before we dive into some details. You do this section over here, um, coming down Polani, and then this out and back section here. This is always an area where a lot of athletes book it. 
They're flying. They're having the times of their life. Adrenaline is through the roof. They just did the Kona swim. Now they're on the bike, and they are coming back to Polani, and it is getting fast. It's usually fast during this section. You hit Polani, you don't really feel it because you got a ton of spectators out again. Um, and normally all the spectators are gone at this point in the race. But at this one, the spectators are back. That adrenaline stays there. You take a left onto the Queen K. And by the time you hit the airport, you are feeling it. Uh, and then it's you know, you kind of struggle, rebuild, and then you get up to Javi, which is way up here, but in a second. Uh, but you continue up over here. You're going to pass kind of the um, some of the main areas to stay where the hotels are located, things like that. Hanging a left up here, and then you are going to be going up to Javi, which you will work to uh, big time. And I can just kind of scroll down, and this is that hill up to Javi. You're going to work up it. You're going to work down it. Uh, the wind is going to be in your face. Uh, and then you're going to do the exact same thing in reverse. But when you do come back, right, you're going to come back over here and you're going to do this loop on its backside. You will not hit Polani again on the bike. That is just on the way on this little out and back section. And then when you come in, you will be going on this backside and hitting the finish line right there. Uh, and that is the bike. Super, super simplified. Uh, but now let's get a little bit deeper. So this is Kona. This is uh, the excuse me, the island of Hawaii, and this is the wind patterns that you can kind of expect on race day. Again, things will change. It's a little bit different pretty much every day that you get out there on the island. Um, but for the most part, there are some consistencies that you can kind of bank on. So looking at the island in a whole, this is our not to go into too much detail here, but this is the point on the island and the wind kind of flows around that. Because we're in the middle of the Pacific, uh, we have a lot of opportunity for the wind to just roll out there. When it hits a mass like this, it rolls around it and it swirls around it to kind of fill that gap. Take you back to kind of your college days. Um, and with this, right, this is where we are going to start our swim. We're going to be doing a little bit of biking here, and then we are flying up this side of the island right here. This is at 2 a.m. on Friday here. Scrolling to 8, you can kind of see that this is what changes here. So this is going to be when you kind of expect to start getting on the bike here a little bit. By 2 p.m., this is what happens with the weather, so it does change a little bit. This is, would be an ideal day to, to, to bike. But... That's not always the case. Moving to Tuesday, and we're going to go back from to 5, and you can kind of see some things that change a little bit here. Uh, this is what it's going to look like at 5 a.m. So you are going to have a tailwind going out on that out and back section that I told you to be careful about. And then when you come up here, you start to experience less wind. It's kind of on your own. And then you start to hit some of those headwinds up there in um, at the top of the island over there. This is at 11 a.m., and things do change a little bit. By 2 p.m., Things are changing even more. Thursday, just to kind of give you another insight here, this is what you will see at 5. This is what you're going to see at 8, 11, and then 2 p.m. as well with the race happening right here. Again, this would be an ideal day to do it, but in my experience, it's never this simple or easy out there on the race course. Uh, I would expect some... I would expect some wind in places that you definitely don't want it. Okay, what you would like to do, um, you know, in years past when it was the wave start, it was awesome, it was great, loved it. Uh, and the goal was to kind of get to this spot before the wind changed direction, and it always does. So you want to kind of ride those tailwinds as long as possible. And that's why the pro is one of the reasons why they really, really work, or they used to really, really work to get to Javi, I could write it up there um, very, very quickly. Because <clears throat> um, then when you come back, right, you're still battling the winds a little bit, but you would have had a bigger benefit to get out there with some of the tailwinds or the dead time before the wind switches on you and gives you a headwind on the way out. But because of the wave starts, we really don't have that opportunity or that ability anymore. What you can expect um, is a very, very tough section right through here on both both routes. Uh, and again, don't get too overly concerned about things. This is uh, this is highway miles out here. So once we get back out onto the Queen K, which is right through here, um, we are going to be riding up a steady upgrade. Uh, steady, 
uphill grade past the first 25 miles. And again, there's going to be plenty of opportunities to go fast, but it is a net uphill over here. So of the about 112 miles, we have about 5,500 feet of elevation gain in these first 25 mile or this 17.8 mile section, uh, you're going to get 700 feet of elevation. So this is a lot of elevation that gets early on. Um, and you're going to have the ability to kind of eat this up very, very quickly on race day. There's going to be a ton of people around you. Again, that adrenaline is going to be pumping. I will say use other people to your benefit out here. Um, kind of this is going to be when you start to set your your uh, your packs up. This is going to be where you start setting up your race day success. Um, very, very common for athletes to, to just fly during this section past the airport, and they're just going, 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 going. Once they get past this section here, then the alarm bells start going off. Then people start thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm 25 miles in, and I have absolutely demolished this section. And it's 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 easier to do. During this section, the max grade is 4%. Most people in that are going to be doing this race, 4% is nothing. Small potatoes, right? And that's the max grade. This is after Polani. Um, so again, this is another real trap. This is the second trap. One's on the swim. Uh, one is on the out and back before this section and this section here. This is another huge trap and this trap is 18 miles long. Okay. Um, athletes won't realize they're getting hot. Athletes won't realize that they're not fueling. All of those things need to be going through your mind. I get that it's the world championships, but you really need to start racing your race past this section here. Uh, and again, as we scroll up and scroll over this, nothing is going to shout, wow, alarm bells ringing in my face, um, aside from this section here, from 17 up to 17.5, half a mile section over here, and that's at about a 4%. Most athletes will be able to get up uh, a good majority of this piece in the aero position. Again, you are going to be on the highways, so you are going to be open to the elements out here, and wind specifically, not rain, but wind. So use other people to your advantage. Watch people in front of you. You're going to be going into your wind protocols big, big, big time out here, um, especially for fueling. Uh, so again, if you want more insights on that, reach out uh, to me. And my personal athletes, I'll be reaching out to you as well. As you as you climb up over here, it's going to just start adding up and adding up. And once you get to mile 25, things change a little bit. And we're going to zoom in pretty much. Uh, let's zoom in right to here. This section, uh, again, 22 miles of, of distance here, and we are going to cover another 1,300 feet of elevation. So at this point, you're going to realize that this is not a throwaway race at all. This is a really, really tough course. A lot of this is going to come in the fact that this elevation is not expected for a lot of people out here. You're going to expect flat island, living, easy riding, and that's not the case. It's the exact opposite out here. Um, you're up, you're down, you're pretty much all around. Max grade is 7.7 .7 in this area, so it does get a little bit steeper out here. There is a couple of hills that you absolutely need to be aware of, and it becomes a little chunkier. So before it was kind of West Coasty vibe out there, and then it, during this course, or this section of the course, it switches to a little more East Coasty vibe. It's compounded with the fact that you are going to experience some West Coast winds, so a lot of athletes just kind of freak out when that happens. But again, you're going to be riding in your wind protocols. You're going to be riding with a number of different people for the vast majority of you. So again, watch what the people are doing in front of you. Don't forget to fuel. Watch your pacing. Biggest uh, suggestion here is keep the tension on the chain as best as possible and really start to slide into your race out here. Um, Stronger cyclists, this is going to be where the area where you start to kind of feel the race and start to get some of those, oh my goodness, I went way too hard vibes. So I would recommend going a little bit easier on this course than you want to. I know it's the world championships, but throttle it back a little bit because the run is coming for us all. Uh, when you do get up over here, this is one of the uh, more famous sections. You do hang a left up here, and then you hit the gas station and veer right uh, during this section right here. That gas station, it is a little deceiving. Uh, some people wipe out there a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, it's not quite a turn. It's not quite a veer. It's somewhere in between. You're going to have athletes, if you're a little bit mid-packer, you're going to have athletes that are coming back. Um, and they're going to be flying down this section. So just watch out for them. Uh, just be careful. All right. Uh, that is one of the other hot corners that no one really talks about on race day. 
Then once you hang this left over here, there's going to be the realization that Javi is qu quickly approaching, quickly approaching. Uh, but again, this section over here, before we go away from it, make sure you're going through your heat protocols, your fueling, your pacing, all of that good stuff. Watch your numbers and don't watch too much of the people in front of you. This section right here, you're going to be uh, having the realization that Javi is coming. And again, you're going to want this section to be flat, but it is anything but. There's going to be a little bit of risers in here. There's going to be a little bit of hills. And if we zoom in on this section here, about eight, eight and a half miles. And again, another 500 feet of elevation. So it just keeps coming here, right? And a lot of people want this section to be flat, but it's not. This section is very, very doable. Max grade of 4% here. But if we slid this back, we can get that down a little bit more here uh, with the max gradients coming in this section right through here um, <clears throat> and then you are going to be leading up to Javi now the Javi is the thing that everyone really talks about there's going to be a couple of um, unplanned rides by Iron Man that are going to be going up Javi on race week there always is keep your eye out on social media they'll be posting about it um, it's no big secret pros will be doing it in the, in the couple of days leading up to the race it's a good time as we go and, and start hooking around the island over here, remember the wind that we just talked about. It's going to start intensifying, and you are going to be working because it's a big hill here. Max grade is 5, but this section does last about 14 miles. So this is 7-mile hill-ish, uh, maybe a little less, 6-mile hill. Uh, but again, this section, you are going to be climbing 745 feet of elevation here. So what athletes get caught up into is a couple of things. Number one. Right, They want to be going a little bit faster than what they think they should be going up this hill. So that's another big trap on this course here. So there's, they'll just be chasing the carrot. And it might not even come in the form of someone else up the road. right? And if there is, that can be another issue for some people. Um, but they're going to want to go up this a little bit faster. Right, the wind's going to be really howling up here. Chances are you're, this is going to be where the wind is the worst on race day. And when you turn around, you're going to expect yourself to absolutely crush this downhill. And again, you're not going to. There's no free areas out here on race day, unfortunately. Um, so just take what you can get on the downhill on the back side of this. Um, <clears throat> athletes really, really, really want to push this hill or they want to use this as a point of recovery. I would almost view this at downhill as a section where you are working and it's a it's a flat or even an uphill grade coming down it, especially for the first half. You're going to have to really work. I mean, you talk to a number of athletes and almost every single year there's athletes that had to be in the small ring coming down the hill for the first part of it just because of the wind and everything. So, uh, again, don't expect that to be a total recovery zone there. Uh, an area where you can make it a little bit of a recovery zone is coming back from about 67 to, let's call it 69 to miles. Uh, but again, if the wind is acting up on race day, that could be, that could not be a recovery zone at all. Undulating, rolling downhills before you get to the gas station out here. And again, 9.5 miles, another 400 feet of elevation. You can see that it's just starting to compound. It's starting to add up. So hope you brought your climbing legs. These climbs aren't going to last uh, an exorbitant amount of time, but they're just going to continue and continue and continue. The downhills are going to become shorter mentally, and the uphills are going to become longer as you progress into this race, not actually, but just mentally. And it's just going to come again and again and again. So the athletes that can really maintain that consistency on the bike are going to be the ones that start flying past people at this point in the race. Um, coming down, Javi, is a point where a lot of athletes just really, really pop on race day. So watch out for that. Watch, watch, watch out. Next big section out on race day, we got two real big sections left. The first one is leading up to the airport, and the second one is approaching the airport and passing it. This first part over here, 14.3 miles, and we do have about 800 feet of elevation gain. Again, you're going to have to go back what you just already went. So this is a net downhill out here, but again, you are going to be going up some chunky areas. This section, notoriously race-killing section right through here. Athletes are feeling good enough here. You know, you're still at 85 miles, 87, 88 miles. You still have the ability to really, really push if you want to. 
Um, and you just have to really throttle it back if you're not feeling great. And what athletes fail to do here is throttle it back, and then they walk the run. And that happens to so many people out here on race day. Uh, huge race day secret, if you underbike a little bit at Kona, you will be still A-OK for the most part um, in your age group. You know, we have so many people that walk the run here that you can find yourself sneaking up high into the placings and not having a super, super awesome bike. So everyone always gets caught up in, I got to have the best bike split as, you know, as possible. And that isn't always the case here. You definitely want a good one for sure. But do you want uh, a stellar grade A one and walk the run? It's kind of up to you. So. Um, this section right here is going to be a huge check-in section for yourself. Watch out. See what your body's feeling. If you're starting to cramp, this is going to be an opportunity for you to self-correct here on race day. Um, probably going to start battling some headwinds during this section, and it's just going to start to not get fun, if you know what I mean. Be smart, and that will kind of take care of itself. Last big section out here on race day. This section right through here. Approaching the airport, passing the airport. Um, this is an area where athletes just want the bike to be over. This section here really, really hits hard on a lot of people. We have a hill right here, maxes out at about four and a half ish percent. Um, and chances are you're going to be battling some form of crosswind or headwind. You might see some pros starting to approach this area, depending on, um, where you are in the wave starts if you start really far back in the day then the pros might be getting ready to be finished uh, and that can be really mentally tough for you but again just kind of put that out of sight out of mind don't really want or um, worry about it yeah, it's no big deal um and get start to get ready for the run here because this is going to be where uh the race is won and lost here this downhill section here again this is where the airport is right here this downhill section, it's it's not strong enough or, or down enough for you to really view it as a real downhill. The wind, if it is in your face, this is going to be a false flat area even though you're going down and you're just going to want to have that speed there. And again, athletes are really going to push here if they're not careful. And again, your brain is going to be turned off at this point. So just be aware of what's happening. Watch out and don't just push to push for pushing sake. All right. Be careful. After you get past here, you do have a little bit of uphills left, but for the most part, they're pretty much over and you are thinking about your race um, for the run. And switching over to the run, this is going to be what you can expect on race day. Dividing this up into two sections here, this is the swim start, or the, yeah, I guess that you could call this the swim start, the bike start, the run start, transition area. Um, you're going to go up Let's zoom in here a little bit. You're going to go up just like you did on the bike. And then you're going to hang a right away from Polani. And you're going to go up and down over here. Looping around. If you look to the right, you'll be able to see this the run finish. But don't worry about that. Uh, you got a, a load, uh, long way to go. This section right here is about 0.7 miles, 0.8 miles into the race here. Uh, this is going to be a really good opportunity for you to check in with yourself. That race line, some people don't look at it. Some people use it as motivation. Know who you are as an athlete and determine what you need to do when it is time out there. Okay, look, don't look, it's up to you. Hanging a left out there, this is going to be where it starts to get hot. It starts to get toasty out here, no matter who you are. Uh, and let me zoom back out here so you can get a better view of what we're about to do here. Could actually work my computer that'd be great um okay so this is a longer out and back than you want it to be we loop back around at about 3.8 miles coming back to that point that we talked about the finish line area that is going to be at about 6.7 6.8 so you're going to be deep into the race at this point here and you should be ready to really know what's going to happen but Backing up to this section, Alihi Drive. Alihi Drive is always another area where athletes really want to put a show on for everyone. You're 0.8 into the run. You know, you're coming back at 7 miles into the run. 19 miles more to go. Really, really check in with yourself and say, do I want to absolutely fly during these sections? If you do, great. You know, put on a show. But if you want to have a great run split, you know, you kind of have to run the way you should, not the way you could in this section. 
Um, it's going to be hot, just like I said, because you're right over here. This is an area, and you'll see in the days leading up to it, chances are you'll be in this area a ton. So you'll, be a, you'll get a really good sense of what's going to happen, and a lot of athletes forget that in the days leading up. You know, the Expos out there, it's spread out all over Leahy Drive. It's the best thing in the world. They totally forget about the heat. They get dehydrated, all kinds of good stuff before the race. Same thing's going to happen on race day. It's a Leahy Drive. All your dreams are coming true. Um, even if you didn't have the best bike out there, you made it to a Leahy Drive. Heck, yeah. And it's hard. It's hard to pull back. It's hard to hold back. But you really have to. You need to out there if you want to have any sort of success after mile eight on the run. This section here, enjoy this section. I tell everyone, have a great time here, um, but don't fly here. Enjoy the moment. This is the time for you to really, really take it in because this is the only time you're going to be on a Leahy Drive until the very, very end. All right. Take a look at the ocean. Take a look at everything. Just take in what you're doing. It's the best, right? Um, yeah, it's there's so many emotions that happen on a Leahy Drive. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, this is one of the flatter sections, of course, as well. So it's not totally impossible to floor it out here. And you think that it's this is going to be the course, and it's great, and you get sucked into that island mentality again. And you, again, you just have to be careful. Um, but coming up, up Polani, this is another area where you do get hit very hard in the legs, and it's a great, um, it's a great reminder of what you're about to do. It's a great just heads up on, hey, this next section, this is the section. Uh, you're going to go up to the Queen K, hang a left, and you're going to be running up the roads that you just biked down back in. It's very lumpy, very chunky. It is highway miles out here, so nothing should really stick out in terms of really, really sharp, aggressive hills. Right, And this is the section after Polani. So after Polani, you do drop down a bit, and you're able to really kind of get the groove back, and you're kind of hold on to it a little bit longer. That's going to last until about eight and a half miles before you start slowly climbing up again. Again, this caps out at like one, one and a half percent, maybe a little less. So again, you can easily run up that, even if you're feeling kind of cruddy. Uh, but I would use this kind of plateau here as a sense of how you're feeling to attack the next section. Downhill section here, uh, again, most people's brains are turned off at this point, and they're just kind of getting through it. If you are shuffling or running during this section, watch your running form. Don't let those legs slide out in front of you. Don't let it uh, kind of get away from you. This section, very, very tough section out here on race day. This is 10, 10 and a half miles into the race. You get hit with a couple of steep hills, aggressive hills, hills that you don't really want to be doing. Um, then you get a little bit of a break before you make that climb up to the airport right there. That climb up to the airport right through here, it's, it's not the most fun, but I actually don't think it's super miserable because what you can do is use this as a stepping stone. I just got to get up to this section. I got to get up there. Um, I got to get there. And then once you're there, then you're in the energy lab. And I again, I wouldn't view the energy lab as a thing that's the worst thing in the world. It's not great, right? It definitely will hit you very, very aggressively if you pass through the energy lab at 3 or 4 in the afternoon. But if you're not getting there at that time, the energy lab is not super crazy, right? If you're getting there at 6, 7, it is, it's not really anything to really worry about. You might have the opposite problem if you're going back there at nighttime. You might have the problem of getting too cold back there, right? You drop down here a little bit. You hit out and back the energy lab. You start the climb back up. This is the climb that everyone talks about. Um, you do have a little out and back section where you will finish off that climb and then you will drop back before climbing back up out of the airport. I'm going to zoom in really fast on this section here just so everyone understands what I just talked about. So this section here, you do have a little out and back right there before you come back up to the, the entrance of the road here on the airport. This little kick up notoriously difficult for a lot of people out there just because it's it's really late into the race you don't want to do it and um, just a combination of things really so this is where a lot of athletes kind of cramp up this is where they um, really really start paying the price for their efforts earlier on in the day and this is at 18.3 miles so we have a long ways left to go uh, to the finish line so it's not like it's over after that zooming in on the rest of the race um, 
seven and a half miles, 230 feet of elevation gain, 370 of loss. So the average gradient here is negative 0.5, right? Um, this is an area where you can mow down a ton, a ton of people in your age group, people overall. Um, if you have any run legs left here, you will be amazed at the amount of people that you are passing. So it's, it's very similar to a lot of Ironman in a, in a way. Uh, I will say that when you get to this point here, if you are running, you're going to be passing a ton, a ton of people. So the uh, the goal really should be to get to this point, survive the energy lab, and then, you know, at that point, do enough to set yourself up to have a shot at a really, really good race. And then if you're here, turn it on, turn it and burn it. It's kind of all systems go here, seven and a half miles left in your race, um, this section, again, even if you're struggling, this section can go by really, really quickly, even if you're going slowly. Um, there's not a whole lot going on over here. You'll be able to look out, see the ocean in a lot of places, and it's kind of it's kind of nice. Um, <clears throat> but that finish line will come quick. Uh, and I'm going to zoom in on the last real section here of the race. So coming down Polani here... Um, and we can even zoom that back out a little more. Things will not get real until you kind of hit the top of Polani. When you get to, to this section out here, uh, the emotions are going to be going wild. You're going to get to the bottom of Polani, and you you're still have your race mode on. But when you get to the bottom of Polani, that's where it's going to hit you. It's going to hit you. There's going to be a ton of emotion out there. There's, think about everything that got you there. It's a huge process. It's a huge accomplishment. You, you're about to achieve something that almost no one gets a chance to do. Okay. Um, so follow the road over here. You're going to hang one right, two rights, and this is the fastest. This is going to be the fastest section ever that you'll experience. 25.9 is where you officially turn on to 25.91, right? You finish. 26.2 it's gonna be the fastest quarter mile of your life even if you're walking or crawling or jogging it is the it's the best and i will tell you there's a load of athletes who hit this corner and fly they just absolutely demolish this section even if you're having a great race i don't know for me i kind of like hitting this section and just saying i'm just gonna cruise in I'm just going to kind of enjoy that, enjoy the moment. Um, last really, really big thing on the race here, when you are coming to the finish line, do not jump in front of someone else at the very end and ruin their picture. Everyone wants that Kona picture at the finish line. Um, you know, be aware, be a real human being, and don't ruin someone's photo at the last second. All right, guys. Uh, enjoy the race out there. If, again, if you have any questions or want to talk individual race specifics for you as the individual, please reach out. If you need any help with coaching services now leading up to the race or beyond, please, please let, let me know. Reach out to me. I'll be happy to help you. Uh, contact me in the link in the description below. And good luck to everyone racing at this edition of the 2024 Ironman Kona World Champions.